Thank you very much for still staying with us. You're watching Business Niger. It's now time to bring you part two of our interview segment on the show today. We are going to be focusing on the digital economy. Now on the quest to drive growth in Nigeria's non-all sector and also revenue base, the federal government introduced a 6% tax on digital services offered to Nigerians by non-resident companies. This implies that Nigerians who visit Amazon and other e-commerce platforms, not resident in the country, will have to pay value-added tax on items purchased online. It will also interest you to note that the tax collection is in line with the provision of the 2021 Finance Act, which empowered the Federal Inland Revenue Service to access CIT on the turnover of foreign digital company involved in transmitting, emitting or receiving signals, sounds, messages, images or even data of any kind, including e-commerce, app stores and online adverts. Notwithstanding, e economic analysts are of the view that the implications for this would include increased revenue generation for the government as challenges with enforcement of compliance and also factory companies may pass cost to customers by way of higher prices. Now, to give more insight into this new tax law and its impact on the e-commerce sector, I have with me in our Lagos studio, Senior Manager at Anderson Nigeria, Oladejo Adeyemi. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me, David. Now, understanding and conceptualizing the digital economy is one of the critical elements in understanding how this plays out, mm -hmm. looking at the economic contribution to the GDP. But first and foremost, let's do an analysis of how things played out in the year 2021, setting the tone for the year 2022 as well, the evolution of tax laws and how things are going to further change. Okay. Thanks for, for, that, um, for laying that background, um, David. Quite frankly, like you mentioned, um, the role of digital economy in recent times, you know, um, particularly with the onset of COVID, you know, cannot be um, overemphasized. Mm. And um, that has kind of ballooned the contributions, you know, as it were, that that particular um, um, sector, you know, has brought, has brought. into um, the Nigerian economy mm. as a whole. So if you take a cue um, or if you um, look at 2020, for instance, at the onset of COVID, you would see a lot of people, of course, a lot of organizations were working, you know, remotely. People started working remotely and then started having a lot of reliance on mm. um, um, digital way of doing things, you know. And then, of course, that pronounced the involvement of that particular sector, you know. And that has grown since 2020 and, of course, extended into 2021. We still have organizations that haven't even physically resumed, mm. you know, up until now. So what we should expect for 2022 is not going to be materially different. From the um, numbers, the numbers that were reeled out um, as at Q2 2021, for instance, the ICT alone, you know, contributed about 17.9% to the Nigerian GDP. So, and if you look at that from what used to obtain, that, that, um, particular portion That's is quite significant. Mm. Exactly. So that's that's what we should um, actually expect even into 2022 because um, there is beginning to be more and more mm. reliance, whether it's with respect to banking, whether it's with respect to commerce, whether it's with respect to whatever it is, you know, there's every reliance on technology um, driven solutions. And of course, that would keep extending the um, contributions that you have in that regard. So that wouldn't change as much for 2022. Okay, now, but still talking about how much of a game changer this would be, let's also look at what's the different elements playing out here, tax and digital companies or sales here versus other sectors. Take, for example, uh, aviation, agriculture, and a whole lot more, right. manufacturing. Okay, so le le let me quickly clear this because I've read a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of um, stuff online, you know, and it appears there might have been some sort of um, misinformation. misinformation. First, to say that um, the, the, the old concept of wanting to tax this um, transaction or this amendment that led to the issue of digital tax, you know, as it were, it's, it's not entirely new, you know, not new in the sense that as far back as 2019, um, end of um, 2019, beginning of 2020, um, the Finance Act 2019 has already brought about um, certain amendments, you know, mm. because the key issue, traditionally, the issue has been taxing companies, um, kind of 
um, required some sort of physical presence. Yes. You know, so there's a particular provision in, in, in the Companies Income Tax Act, I don't want to bore you with the specifics, you know, that required companies to do um, stuff that in, in, in essence appear like they have to have physical, they have to be physically present in a location mm. within Nigeria before they can be considered as doing business in Nigeria. So the whole, um, the whole um, essence of having to then do stuff without coming into Nigeria, how do you then tax that company, that kind of entity? So that was the problem. So as far back as 2020, like I said, Finance Act 2019 came into effect, amended that, introduced what the concept called the significant economic presence order to say, you don't even have to be physically present, you know, for so long as you had Business some sort of, exactly, here. some sort of mm -hmm. significant economic presence. You've been present in a way that it's, we have deemed significant enough as a, comp as a mm -hmm. country, then it's only fair for you to then contribute your quota in terms of um, taxes, you know. Mm -hmm. So what you've seen in recent times, particularly through the um, 2021 Finance Act, mm -hmm. is more like an, um, an avenue to further expound, you know, that which had been, had been, that introduction had been done in the past with respect to that section of the law, so that there's further clarity, you know, and that's why it then gets to tax on revenue. Mm. So the, 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 the only reason this is kind of um, having a lot of impact now is because you've then brought in digital transactions, you know, into the, into the system, you know, or into the game you know, as it were, because what it used to be before was just some sort of you're doing business, mm -hmm. you know. So now there's clarity as to even when your business is kind of digital, is remotely conducted or you've concluded your business in a remote manner, mm -hmm. this is the mannerism of, of tax, you know. This is how we are going to be taxing you, mm -hmm. you know, essentially. So that's what it's about. Okay, so Dejanal, for players in the industry today now, both home and abroad, those who are looking to come into Nigeria and a whole lot more, what does this mean to them? For some, it, it, it comes like a double-edged sword, an yeah. incentive and a disincentive as well, be it on the part of government and on the part of other players outside the government quarters. What do you really think this would do to the market here in Nigeria? And how much of an invitation is this really now to the global community to say, hey, look at Nigeria, come in here. Is this an any, does this put on any investment at all, okay. incentive? Okay, so, so um, um, I would say that there have been mixed reactions. Yes. Mixed reactions in the sense that there are um, quarters on non-resident companies that believe, oh, we've been waiting for this a long time ago. We need to have clarity as to precisely how am I going to be taxed? Because um, when it comes to the issue of taxes, some, some um, entities or some players want to do everything that there is, everything that they are expected to mm. do. Meanwhile, some people will not just care or bother, you know, which is why you then need to then do stuff that would ensure that you increase compliance. Mm. So for, from, the, um, from the point of view of those that want to do the right thing, it's more like, yes, we have clarity. Thank God there is clarity and all. But from the other side, because there's a bigger, there's a bigger approach more like a global approach towards um, towards ensuring the right taxing of the digital economy, which is the approach that OECD, you know, mm. is actually bringing up. The, it's, it's called a two-pillar solution approach. Mm. Nigeria hasn't quite keyed into that approach, you know, and that approach requires some sort of allocation of profit, mm. and then you would have a certain percentage, global minimum tax yes. produced. Nigeria hasn't quite keyed into that, that approach. So this is more like an abridged position for the country to say, oh, we haven't keyed into, because that is meant to take effect from 2023. But now, maybe because the country is still is, 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 um, believes that it may not be in its favor entirely because of certain peculiarities, maybe, maybe not. Nothing has been said specifically in those regards. So when you look at it comprehensively, you then, have, you then, re you then realize that you have the, um, the, the, those on the other side of the divide thinking, oh, globally, Nigeria is not keen into some sort of a global um, conversation um, or movement. Exactly, exactly. Mm. Which then um, kind of makes it um, like unpalatable as, mm. they are, as far as they are concerned. But there are players that are saying, oh, this is exactly what we've been waiting for. We want mm. to know precisely how we are going to be taxed. We want to know whether there's VAT applicable on this transaction. We want to know whether there's no VAT. We want to know what precisely would happen when 
um, I've conducted business, I've earned revenue from Nigeria, mm -hmm. and I'm a non-resident com com company, and I've done X, Y, Z, you know. So it's actually um, mixed reactions from those two quarters, essentially. Mm -hmm. And how would you also say whether or not it's going to be easy for the FRS to also track such transactions, really? It, 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 it's, it's never going to be easy, quite, mm -hmm. quite frankly, because if, if it was going to be easy, then... It should have been done <laughs> several <laughs> years ago, right? So it's mm. never going to be easy. But the truth is, if there is any time or if there was any time FRS needs to rely more and more, which is the direction we are actually seeing them going, mm. even from the amendment that have been done exactly. to the FRS, amend, um, FRS Establishment Act, reliance on technology, you know, they need to, the FRS needs to do much more you know, in terms of... Automation of processes exactly, as well. Exactly, simplification here. Exactly. So, such that you can easily um, determine how much is payable, you know, determine where revenue has been generated, you know, and you reduce the areas of conflict, you know, from, from those different transactions that um, those entities are going to be doing. Mm. So it's more like, oh, now that this is in place, even though that conversation ought to have happened even before the amendment, but that I mean, now that something is going to force it stir up some change, exactly. Mm. So, every reliance on technology, data mining, and a lot of um, okay. harnessing of information here and there. Okay, now for the likes of companies, look at Twitter, for example, there were certain conditions that had to come to bear before we had Twitter come back. Uh, do you think we have uh, the country properly positioned to have much more tech hubs and also? Uh, catalyze the digital economy to the prospect really it can be, especially within the West African corridor. It's quite difficult to say Nigeria is playing strong at this point in time compared to the likes of Ghana and other uh, countries where they have consistent policy direction which understands the scope of technology, tech companies and the future really. I, 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 quite, I quite agree um, um, with the point you've made, but the truth is the Nigerian space has a lot of opportunities, you know. And the, if you look at the way tech companies are springing up, the potentials that are logged in into, because if you look at one of the things that technology really helps to do is provide solutions. Mm -hmm. And for an economy like a Nigerian economy where there are a lot of problems, you know, go to electoral processes, go to banking, there are challenges everywhere, you know. So contrary to what you said, if, if there was any place, you know, where, um, where that should be the center of attraction, you know, mm. it should be around this line. You know, because there are a lot of challenges. But don't you think it's there. just simply uh, uh, the simplification of the fact that we have a huge population base and a mira uh, myriads of <laughs> problems to deal with? Hence, there's the need for a solution. So there would always be those inventors and innovators coming to bear and also saying, well, here is a solution. Look mm -hmm. at this area and that area. But if the policy direction of government is not necessarily clear or is not incentivizing the sector as much as possible, it's either those dreams die or they look for somewhere else that's much more favorable. Exactly. So that's what we are saying here today. Exactly. It is a possibility, mm. you know, and some, some may actually think it's already happening, you know, like you, like you mentioned an example with Twitter, mm. you know, of course. Um, um, but the truth is the government is not unaware of all of this um, potential policy conflict and within the confines of what can be done, I, I believe the government is doing its best to mm. be sure that um, um, balance is achieved on, from all quarters. Because you're talking about a government that is in um, dire need of a lot of revenue. revenue. They need to show up <laughs> revenue. So there are actually conflict. Mm. So mm. to be able to deploy multiple policies that mm. would have zero possibility of at, uh, of, of, of having conflict, it's, mm. it's a tall order, you know, to be frank. But I'm sure that the, best, the, the government is doing all that it could do and can certainly still do more, you know, to mm. ensure that it strikes balance, you know, from all of these angles. We keep our fingers crossed to see how the implementation of the Finance Act 2021 is going to play out, the interface and the forced conversations it's also going to bring to bear. Thank you very much for speaking with us today Thank on the show. So it's been much. a pleasure speaking Thank with you, you Ola Dejo, and we hope that government also takes cues and necessary actions when need be. Thank it's you. It's a privilege to be here. Thank you, David.